I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to look at Remix Effects within Logic Pro 10.5. Remix Effects is a new plugin which can either be applied to the stereo output or to an individual track within your project. And what it lets you do is to bring in DJ style effects either to your whole mix or to just one track within it. In this particular project, I've added it to the stereo output track so that we can hear it really clearly. It's going to affect everything passing through the track as a result of the fact that it's just sitting there on the stereo output bus. So what exactly is Remix Effect? Well, it's a plugin that looks like this. You can see it here very clearly. And what it gives us are different effect areas, which we can then trigger in real time to create um, effects which uh, we hear uh, DJs using all the time. So what we can hear on the left hand side or see on the left hand side is an XY pad and there's another one over here on the right and to each of these we can apply a particular type of effect. This one is currently selected as a filter and this one's using what's called an orbit effect but we can click on either of these and select something different if we want to, maybe a note repeater or a second filter or wobble effects and so on and so forth. I'll select reverb for now. What I've then got is a gator effect, which is going to chop up or gate the signal as it plays. And here we've got an opportunity to add lo-fi or bit crush style effects on the right hand side. And we've also got three little areas where we can create a sort of DJ a vinyl type effect, either backwards playing uh, from this button or reversing an opportunity to add uh, record scratch effects from this button. And here we can produce a sort of vinyl stop type effects. And actually each of these features two separate buttons, one on the left and one on the right, which you can see turn pink when I click on them. And in order to configure exactly what I want all of the parameters of Remix Effects to do, I can click this button here, which then allows me to configure each of these effects in turn. So for instance, if I wanted to change the backward speed at which each, um, at which, uh, each audio slide would play. I could click on the side of the button that I wanted to uh, change, select the value that I wanted here, and then do the same thing again here for the right hand side. So this little pop up window allows me to create changes to any parameter that I click on to go through and just make changes. And you can see the display here changes at the top to show me the active parameters for any particular effect type. So if I come out of here, what we should be able to do now is to start creating some of these effects in real time. And what I'm going to do is just trigger some of the live loops scenes within this project and start adding effects to them. Now, at the moment, I'm going to be a little bit hampered by the fact that I'm going to try and trigger these live scenes and some effects at the same time. I'm going to move this down so they're a little bit closer together. But it's fair to say that Remix Effects has been particularly optimized for people who are using Logic Remote, either on an iPhone or an iPad, where not only can you trigger the scenes and live loops function, Remix Effects is there within that interface in order to allow you to create sort of much more seamless effects than I'm going to be able to by using my mouse to try and do two things at once. But we'll do the best we can and you should get a good sense of what Remix Effects can do.
Okay, so we've just taken a little bit of a tour through some of those buttons, and you can begin to see what I mean about trying to trigger clips and instantiate these effects at the same time. However, if you don't have an iPad or you don't have an iPhone, all is not lost. What we're going to do now is we're going to think about a way of being able to record some of these changes as they go through and play back um, and create a kind of linear project out of these scenes so that we're in a position to... Uh, record some of these changes in real time. And of course, because that is going to get recorded as automation data, what we can do after the fact is to go back and make changes and make sure that our start and end points happen exactly where we want them to. So that, of course, in post-production, we can tidy up the effects that we use. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just prepare my first scene. We're going to start here over on the left hand side. I'm going to take off the loop option within the main area within Logic because what we're going to do is to make a recording of these scenes. So we're passing the live effects into a linear arrangement over here on the right hand side. But what I'm also going to do is to just open up the mixer for a second. We're going to see that remix effects here is in the stereo output channel. So what I'm going to do is to select touch mode so that any changes that I make to these parameters will be recorded as automation data. And then what we'll do is we'll put this back here again so that I'm as close to my scene clips as I can be and hopefully we can make some changes. But as I say, anything that we don't like, we can go back and tweak um, in a little while anyway. So let's make a recording and see where we get to. Okay, so we've now created our uh, live sequence for now. We'll come out of record mode here. And what I'm going to do as well is just to collapse the live loop section for a second and just make sure that we're ready to hear this project as it plays back within the linear version of uh, Logic rather than from the live loops option. And we can just see that I'm activating those clips in order to do precisely that. And if I now press the A button to open up the automation lane, what we should be able to see is that we've got a really nice... Um, uh, collection of pieces of automation which we can then refine if we want to. So for instance we should find that there are a lot of individual um, options here. So here's my uh, filter on off and of course what I was having to do was to make sure that I was sort of coming off this effect in order to then trigger the next scene start. So the end of this effect for instance is going to finish too soon but if I move it back to the start point of where I actually want that um, effect to finish then of course I'm in a position to create exactly the changes that I want by tidying these up. And the same thing's true I can go through one parameter after another and if I want to I can create these really nice smooth lines so I'm just coming down down to the filter positions that I want. So as I say, if you do have an iPad or an iPhone, then it's definitely worth downloading the latest version of the Logic Remote app because it allows you to work with these effects much more intuitively. However, all is not lost, as you can see, if you don't, because it's possible to go back through in post-production and iron out any changes that you want to make to the remix effects that you add to your project.